Today's adventure starts at the little castle. Journey to the center of the earth. Hello, Mrs. Fothering Girl. Have you come to teach Daisy and Poppy? Yes, Nanny Plum. And this time, I am not going to let Daisy and Poppy get the better of me. That's the spirit. She's doomed. Mrs. Fotheringill is here to give the twins their lesson. Are you sure you really want to do that, Mrs. Fotheringill? We'd quite understand if you... Oh, no, I have thought long and hard about it. And what happened last time was not the twins' fault. It was my fault. But the twins zapped you to the South Pole. Only because I didn't give the little darlings enough trust. If you trust a child, they will repay your trust. <laughs> now, Daisy and Poppy, let's start this lesson as we mean to go on. Ah! Let's just open our picture books and... Ah! Yeah! What are they doing to her up there? The last time she taught the twins, they made her disappear. All they found was her shoe. Disappear! Now, Daisy, I know the Deep down, you're good, and you'd never make me disappear. Disappear. <laughs> ah, good. They've gone quiet. Quiet isn't good. It means they're up to something. I hope Mrs. Fotheringill is all right. <gasps> all that's left of her is her shoes. <laughs> Daisy, Poppy, where is Mrs. Fotheringill? Gone. All gone. Gone? My goodness! The twins are so wild and naughty. Where do they get it from? Grandpapa Thistle is here. There's your answer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Dad. Grandpapa! 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 Papa. <laughs> Hello, my dears. I was just passing and I asked myself, why don't I take my grandchildren for a day out? Hooray! Hang on, Dad. Where were you thinking of taking the children? I thought we'd visit a volcano. Um, I don't think climbing up a volcano is such a good idea. We're not going to climb up it. Oh, good. We're climbing down inside it. What? You can't take children into a volcano. It's too dangerous. Is it? All right, then. How about lion taming? No. What's wrong with a nice walk in the meadow? I bet the twins would like to go down a volcano. Yes, Grandpa Papa. Papa. The twins are in disgrace today. They have been very, very naughty. Ah, what have the little darlings done? They've only made their teacher disappear. Oh, that nice Mrs. Fotheringill. Gone. All gone. Daisy, Poppy, where have you sent your teacher? Down. Down to the kitchen. Down, down. Down to the cellar. Very down. You know what? I think Daisy and Poppy have sent Mrs. Fotheringill to the centre of the earth. Centre of the <laughs> We have to rescue her. Well, that's settled where we're going for our day out then. To the centre of the earth. <laughs> journey to the centre of the earth. There were dinosaurs and lost tribes and everything. Dinosaurs? In the centre of the earth? What nonsense. It's true. I saw it on the telly. How do we get to the centre of the earth? We could just take the stairs. Stairs? Yes. There are secret stairs in the little castle that go down, down, down. Ooh. The stairs start from a secret entrance in the kitchen. We just have to press this large button. Oh, I've always wondered what that button was for. I built these stairs when I built the little castle. I asked myself, why have stairs only to the cellar? Why not to the centre of the earth? You're a bit crazy, aren't you? I'm not crazy. I'm completely bonkers. Look, there's some writing on the wall. It's runic writing written by dwarves. What does it say? Nanny, can you translate it? 
Hmm. It says, take these stairs down to the centre of the Earth. At the bottom, you'll see dinosaurs. Does it really say dinosaurs? No, I made that bit up. But there will be dinosaurs. You'll see. <sighs> No, Holly. We have to go past the roots of the plants, the drains, the giant spider caves. It's a long way to the centre of the Earth. So how many steps do we have to go down? 48 million trillion thousand. Oh, no. My feet are tired already. That's why I got the dwarves to put a lift in. Doors opening. Hold tight, everyone. The lift does go rather fast. Doors closing. Going down. Whoa! Oh, my tummy! This is fun! Brilliant! Centre of the Earth. Doors opening. Here we are, the centre of the Earth. It's a huge cave. It's full of trees and giant mushrooms. Yep, that's how it was on telly. Well, one thing that's not here, dinosaurs. <laughs> There's one. Oh. See? The telly is always right. But now that we're here, how do we find Mrs Fotheringill? Gaston can sniff Mrs Fotheringill's shoes and find her. Brilliant, Ben. <laughs> Find Mrs. Fotheringill. <laughs> Good boy, Gaston. <laughs> I wonder where we'll find the lost tribe. Lost tribe? What nonsense. Whoa, look at that. A lost tribe. Told you. They're elves and fairies, just like us. Halt. Who journeys through our land? We come from the surface of the mighty Earth. We welcome you, surface dwellers. We thank you, O oh Lord of the Underground. Nanny, why are they speaking in that funny way? That's how they speak on telly. We bid you greetings. Uh, actually, we've come to get Mrs Fotheringill. Ah, the one we call Teacher. Yes, that'll be her. Good morning, children. My name is Mrs. Fother... Hello, Mrs. Fotheringill. Oh, hello, everybody. We're here to rescue you. And we've brought your shoes. Oh, my shoes. It's good to have them back. It's been very nice and peaceful down here. A bit like a holiday. But I will be glad to be back in my own little home. Fothergill! Fothergill! Ah, Daisy! Poppy! Ah! On the other hand, I think I'll stay here. Young lady, do you want to be rescued or not? Oh, I don't know. It's so hard to decide. I'll make it easy for you. Yes? As queen, I command you to come back. Oh, well, in that case... Right. Mission accomplished. Let's go home. Back to the lift, everyone. Oh, no. Not that horrid lift again. My poor tummy. There is another way up. We can go by balloon. <laughs> Just need a basket. Abracadabra. All aboard. Goodbye, people of the underground. We bid you farewell, surface dwellers. See ya. Ah, oh, floating gently up in a balloon sounds lovely and relaxing. It certainly will be lovely and relaxing. If you can call hurtling through a volcano relaxing. Volcano? Of course. The volcano will take us straight up to the surface. Dad, I said no volcanoes. Oh, we'll be fine. As long as the volcano doesn't erupt. Whoops, seems to be erupting. Oh, well, here we go. Next stop, the little castle. Now, Daisy and Poppy, say sorry to Mrs Fotheringill for causing her so much trouble. Sorry. And do you promise to be good next time I teach you? We promise. Oh, they are sweet, really, aren't they? She never learns. She's doomed. <laughs>
Today's adventure starts at the little castle. The wand factory. Oh, strawberry. Isn't it a lovely morning? Yes, Nanny Plum. Hi, Holly. Hi, Strawberry. Have you come to join us for wand practice? No. I came to see if Holly wanted to play. But now you can join us for wand practice. Uh, but I don't know where my wand is. You're holding it. Oh, yes. So I am. Come along. You know how much fun wand practice is. Ugh. Right. Now you can practice lifting rocks with magic. Up and down. Up and down. Up. And down. down. Up and down. down. Very good. Keep it going. Up and down. down. Up and down. down. Oh. Oh. Hi, Holly. Hi, Strawberry. Do you want to play football? We can't. We have to do wand practice. Up and down. Up and down. Aren't you supposed to be gentle with your wands? It's OK. Wands are very strong. You don't want to break them. Don't be silly. They never break. Show him, Holly. Hit your wand on that rock. OK. <gasps> oh, dear. Holly, strawberry. How's wand practice going? Uh, not very well. Holly's broken her wand. How did that happen? I was waving it very gently and she bashed it on a rock. That wasn't very clever. Sorry, Nanny. Not to worry. We'll just get it mended. Hooray! Are you going to mend it with magic, Nanny? Oh, no. I can't mend it. Why not? Wands make magic, but magic can't make wands. It's like chickens and eggs. Chickens make eggs, but eggs don't make chickens. But eggs do make chickens. Whatever. The important thing is, I can't mend wands by magic. So, who can mend it? The elves that made it. Elves? Do elves make wands? Of course they do. Everyone knows that. Elves are very good at making wands. And we're elves. <laughs> <laughs> to the Elf Factory! Look, Nanny, wands are magic and elves don't do magic. Elves don't use the wands, Holly. They just make them. Good morning. Can I help you? Um, I've broken my wand. She bashed it on a rock. One moment, please. Wise old elf. Wise old elf, please report to reception immediately. Ah, Princess Holly, what can I do for you? Holly's broken her wand. She bashed it on a rock. I see. Not to worry, we'll just mend it. Follow me. Now you will need these hard hats. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be taking the train. Ooh. All aboard! Hold tight, everyone. We're going deep down. How deep down? Level 500, the wand factory. Ah! <laughs> level 500? It's the deepest level there is. Why is the wand factory so deep underground? Because wands are magic. And elves don't like magic. So we built the wand factory as deep underground as possible. <laughs> oh, my tummy. Now, what's wrong with your wand? It broke itself. She bashed it on a rock. Yes, yes, but we need to find out exactly what's wrong with your wand. Ooh. The X-ray shows it needs a new stick and a cog service. This way. 
This is the stick house, where we grow wooden sticks for wands. But there are loads of sticks just lying around in the meadow. Ah, but the stick for a wand must be specially grown. And made from the right type of tree. Correct, Nanny Plum. The wood for my wand comes from a plum tree, because I am Nanny Plum. The wood for your wand, Holly, should come from a... Holly tree! Exactly. So, Strawberry, what tree does your wand come from? Um, it must come from a strawberry tree. Oh. Let's see how that feels. Hmm, it's a bit big. It just needs a little trim. This stage of wand repair is a mixture of woodwork and gardening. Is my wand mended now? I'm not yet, Princess Holly. We need to mend the head. Follow me. This is the clockwork room. Ooh. Spinny Ikulpu clamp, please. Any ickle poo clam? Wooble cone. Wooble cone. It all looks very complicated. Mending a wand head is a mixture of surgery and watchmaking. Ah! The fidge fudge rotter whistle stick. Whistle stick. Hmm, interesting. That doesn't sound right. Very good. Hooray! Can we go home now? Not yet, Nanny Plum. Holly's wand needs testing. To the testing room. The wand testing room. It is the safest place to do magic in the kingdom. Why do you need a special room to do magic? We don't want the magic leaking out and causing trouble. Where's the fun in that? Magic is not meant to be fun. Safe and sensible magic is what we do here. What's he doing? He's setting up the testing robot to do a magic spell. What's that? Lemonade. We're going to test the wand by turning the lemonade into something else. Is it going to turn into a golden coach? Or a monster with a hundred eyes and three legs? <laughs> Wait and see. <laughs> the lemonade has turned into water. Why would you want to do that? That's not magic. It's very sensible magic. It's rubbish magic. Well, what would you turn it into? How about this? Ah! You did magic outside the test room. Oh, it's a lemon. I meant to turn it into a frog. Nanny Palum. My wand's not working right. It's rattling. Oh, I see what you mean. That doesn't sound right. Hmm. When did you last have this wand serviced? Ten years ago. Wands should be serviced once a year. Here, try that. Yes, that's much better. Nanny, you turned the wise old elf into a frog. So I did. Are you going to turn him back again? Oh, I suppose I'll have to. Silly old elf, back to yourself. Very good. Your wand seems to be working perfectly. Don't wait ten years before getting it serviced again. Yes, wise old elf. Sorry. Thank you for mending my wand, wise old elf. You're welcome, Princess Holly. <laughs> It's good to have you back again, Wand. I promise to take special care of you from now on. Yes, 
Don't bash it on a rock. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the lake. Redbeard's Rainbow. Hello, Redbeard. Ahoy there, Ben and Holly. Are you ready for a day of adventure? Yes, we are. Nanny Plum, me lovely fairy maiden. Are you coming too? Oh, if I must. Ha-ha! A fine sunny day such as this is just right for adventure. It started to rain. No adventure today, Mr Pirate. A rainy day such as this is just right for adventure. Look, there's a rainbow. Ooh! And a rainbow is a pirate's best friend. Why is that? What do you find at the end of a rainbow? A pot of gold! And pirates love gold! Oh, pots of gold at the end of rainbows? That's just a fairy story! Well, you're a fairy, aren't you? Uh, yes, but... Come on, then! Make ready to sail! Ben, you can be cabin boy! Aye, aye, Captain! Polly can be lookout! Aye, aye, Captain! Polly Parrot can be the ship's parrot. Ah, pieces of eight. What about Gaston? Uh, he can be the ship's cat. <laughs> uh, cats don't normally bark, do they? Well, no. Gaston, can you say meow? <laughs> Sounds like a meow to me. Hop aboard, Gaston. <laughs> and Nanny Plum can be... Oh, wait a moment. What is it? You're a woman. Yes. Sailors say it's bad luck to have a woman on board. Bad luck to have a woman on board? How can you say such a thing in this day and age? You're right. It's probably a lot of old sailors' nonsense. Welcome aboard. What's my job, then? You just stand there and look pretty. Huh! Now let's set sail for the end of the rainbow and find that pot of gold. Hurrah! 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 Yeah, hurrah. Big clouds ahead. I can't see the rainbow anymore. Just keep heading for where it was. That's thunder. A storm? Oh, dear. Can we go home now? Go home? The adventure's just beginning. Ah, he's in the night. Ooh. Ooh. How do you stay still, Redbeard? You just need to get your sea legs, that's all. It's a good job none of you get seasick. Oh, my tummy. Nanny Plum, you've gone green. <laughs> Man overboard! Oh, sorry, I mean woman overboard! Well... Catch hold of his life belt! <laughs> oh, I fell in the sea. It was horrible. Perhaps those sailors were right. It is bad luck having a woman on board. Bad luck for the woman. I just want to get off this rocking boat and onto solid ground. Land ahoy! Straight ahead! Ah, a little island. Ah, oh, it's so nice to stand on something that isn't moving. Redbeard, do islands normally have fins? Not as a rule, no. What about eyes? Hardly ever. It's lovely being on dry land. Uh, I think you should come back now. No, I want to stay here. Pick me up on the way home. Nanny Plum, hurry! I'm not leaving this island. I wouldn't exactly call that an island. Why not? Because it's a fish and a whopping big one. It's Big Bad Furry. Ah, help me. Don't worry, you're in no danger as long as he doesn't think you're food. Like a fly or something. Ah! Nanny does look like a fly. Ah, I'm not a fly. I'm not a fly. Ah, get away. Don't let Barry catch you. Help! Don't flap 
your wings so much, Nanny. Fly faster, Nanny. Oh, Nanny, don't look so like a fly, will you? Ah! Ah! Nanny, catch hold of the hook. Oof. Now she looks a bit like a worm on a hook. Ooh, fish like eating worms. I'm not a worm. I'm not a worm. Whoops. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to use a fishing rod. Ah! Hang on, Nanny. I'm pulling you in. Ah! And how's me sweet darling? Not having a very good day, are you? Not having a good day? Not having a good day? A fish just tried to eat me. Yep. Those sailors were definitely right about the woman on board bad luck stuff. Fog! Coming towards us! Fog? That's bad. Can we go home now? No! We've got more adventuring to do. I can see lights. It looks like another ship. Why, blow me down! That'd be the ship of my friend, Captain Squid! Ahoy there, Captain Squid! Funny, there's no one on deck. It's very quiet. Hello! Hello! Anyone home? Look, there's a meal on the table. It's still hot, but there's no one here. Meal on the table, but the boat's empty. This is certainly a mystery. Ooh. No one will never, ever know what happened to poor old Captain Squid. A mystery that will never be solved. Here's a note. Gone to bury treasure, back in five minutes. Oh, that solves it then. So, where do you think Captain Squid is? Hmm, where would you bury treasure around here? The end of the rainbow! The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow! That'll be the gold Captain Squid's burying! Come on, let's get after him! It's not getting any closer. That's the thing about rainbows. When you walk towards them, they go further away. We're not going to walk there. We're going to fly. Fly? But you're an elf. You don't have any wings. Yes, but I'm an elf with a parrot. Ah, he's a knight. Saddle up, shipmates. There's the pot of gold. And there be Captain Squid, burying treasure. Redbeard, this is my treasure, not yours. How did you find me? We just followed the rainbow. Ah, rainbows. They're a pirate's worst enemy. No, they're not. Rainbows are a pirate's best friend. Depends whether you're burying treasure or finding it. Good point. So, anyway, don't let us stop you, Captain Squid. You get back to burying your treasure. Thank you kindly, Redbeard. I was just about to bury it here. Hang on. You can't trick me that easily. No one must see where I bury my treasure. You've all got to close your eyes. Thank you. OK, you can look now. So, where did you bury it? Why, it's right over there. Ha <laughs> ha! You're trying to trick me again. Oh, you won't get it out of me that easy. The rainbow is moving. It's gone to the treasure. Ah, blasted rainbows. Don't worry, Captain Squid. We won't dig it up, will we, Redbeard? No, of course not. Is it home time yet? Yes, I think it is. Today's adventure is over. And I'd be honoured to take you all home on my yacht. That sounds a nice way to travel. Yacht? That's a rowing boat. Plenty of room if we all squeeze up. <laughs> Where can I sit? Wait a minute. Are you a woman? Yes. Oh, bad luck having a woman on board. It's all right. Turns out it's bad luck for the woman, not for us. Oh, in that case, welcome aboard, me lovely. <laughs> Oh, no! It's rocking worse than Redbeard's boat! Fun, isn't it? Yes! That's 
what being an elf pirate is all about. Having fun. By the way, none of you get seasick, do you? <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the little castle. Camping out. Hi, Ben. Hi, Holly. Are you ready to come camping? Yes, please. Um, why have you brought an orange? It's to scare off gnomes. You know what they say. To scare off a gnome, bring an orange from home. What's wrong with gnomes? Oh, you don't want to bring a gnome on a camping trip. They talk and talk and talk and talk. Yes, gnomes are just like elves. Absolutely not. Gnomes are greedy, boring creatures who talk and talk and talk and Goodness, talk and... Goodness, look at the time. We really should be going. Bye, Mummy and Daddy. Bye, Nanny. Goodbye. Have fun. Watch out for those gnomes. Don't worry. We've got our orange. Here's the timetable. One, set up camp. Two, hang up washing. Three, make a campfire. Four... Dad, we're on holiday. Try to relax, Mr Elf. I'll do my best, Mrs Elf. Here we are. yippity doo da <laughs> <laughs> Will there be any dancing? Can we sing songs? There will be no dancing or singing. Just camping. Here's the tent. Shall I magic the tent up for us, Mr Elf? Holly, I'd rather you didn't do any magicking. Remember, this is an elf camp. Elves have been camping for hundreds of years. We can put tents up with our eyes closed. Wow! One elf tent. Hooray! Lovely. Now we're on holiday. Yes, and that means there's holiday work to be done. Holiday work? Next on the list, hang out the washing. But we've only just arrived. Why do you need to hang out the washing? A campsite can never be too clean and tidy. I'll slice the orange. Mrs Elf, how do oranges keep gnomes away? It's the smell. Gnomes hate the smell of oranges. Oh. There. Now we're safe. Next on the list, collect sticks for the campfire. Here are some sticks. Here are some more. OK, that's enough sticks. <laughs> oh. Hello there. A gnome. Mind if I join you? Uh, well... Thank you. I'll only stay for a week or two. Oh, no. But... We had an orange. Yes. I wouldn't have found you if it weren't for the smell of this orange. But gnomes hate oranges. Normally, yes. But I'm on a balanced diet, you see. If I eat ten pies and twenty steam puddings, I need to balance that by eating fruit. <sighs> Let's make a fire. How do you make a fire, Mr Elf? Rub two sticks together really fast, like this. You have to rub the sticks a little bit faster. Would you like to hear the interesting thing I know about sticks? <sighs> sticks grow on trees. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I'm nice and warm now. That's because fire is hot. <laughs> <sighs> I'm hungry. Me too. What a surprise. I've hardly eaten anything today. I've only had ten pies, a skip full of chips, 30 apple tarts. Wow, that's a lot. A sponge cake, 100 sausages and... That orange. I thought you said you were on a diet. Oh, I am. There are some things I don't eat, like stones, wood and television sets. But nobody eats those things. What? You're on this diet too? I never knew it was so popular. What's for dinner, Mrs Elf? Cheese and onion pie. Oh, thank you very much, Lee. That's tasty. Yes, 
It's Scrummy. Oh, very good. What's that? It's an owl. It's got very big eyes. Would you like me to tell you an amazing fact? About owls? Uh, I'll take that as a yes. The owl is in fact a bird. It has big eyes for seeing things. <laughs> Six o'clock. Time for bed. Oh. I'll put the fire out. Can't you leave it to keep the owl warm? It's dangerous to leave a fire going, Princess Holly. <laughs> That's right. Don't go to bed till the fire is out. And don't go to bed with a carrot on your head. <laughs> That's silly. Then, Holly, you get in the tent and go to sleep. Mr Gnome, you have to go home. But we're having fun. Elf camping is not meant to be fun. Bedtime is at six o'clock, not the middle of the night. Oh, I know a song about the middle of the night. Would you like to hear it? No! I'll take that as a yes. In the middle of the night, the stars twinkle bright. Rinky-dinky-doo, rinky-diddly-dee. Dooby-dooby-doo, dibbly-dibbly-dee. <laughs> All together now. Rinky-dinky-doo, rinky-diddly-dee. Dooby-dooby-doo. Time for bed. It was lovely meeting you, Mr Gnome, but now we need to get some sleep. Oh, yes. A good night's sleep is very important. Rinky-dinky-doo, rinky-diddly-dee. Dooby-dooby-doo, dibbly-dibbly-dee. Rinky-dinky-doo. Stop! Would you like me to stop? Yes! And please go! Would you like me to go? Yes! Goodbye! <laughs> oh, sleep well. See you in the morning. <laughs> Mr Gnome is funny. He is silly. Yes, really silly. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good, Good night. night. <sighs> <gasps> it's the gnome. He's come back to eat our breakfast. <laughs> oh, a mole. <laughs> oh, it's eating our washing. Shoo, shoo. Go away, mole. <laughs> Princess Holly, do you know a magic spell to get rid of moles? I'm sorry, Mr Elf. I don't. Oh, dear. Think, Mr Elf. What gets rid of moles? Hello. Yes, moles don't like us gnomes. No idea why. Ah, uh, thank you, Mr Gnome, for uh, saving our campsite from the mole. That's all right. What's for breakfast? The mole ate all the food. Oh, dear. Good morning. Nanny, Nanny Plum. Plum! How was your night? It was very strange. Mr Gnome turned up and he loves oranges. And Mr Gnome sang a funny song called Rinky Dinky Doo. Then a mole came along and ate our washing line and all our food. And now we haven't any breakfast. Yes, I thought that might happen. That's why I've brought the magic picnic basket. Breakfast for everyone! Hooray! Hooray! Oh, I'm actually very hungry. Oh, have you not eaten either? Not today. Oh, dear, it's empty. <laughs> it isn't empty. It's a magic picnic basket. Magic basket, please. Breakfast for everyone! Hooray! I get the idea. Magic basket, please. Twenty poached eggs. Lots of toast. Nine jars of jam. Forty sausages and ninety pancakes. Yippee! What a splendid breakfast! Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Gnome. Breakfast is one of the things gnomes know a lot about. <laughs> mm, yummy, yummy. Oh, oh, I almost forgot my balanced diet. I shouldn't be eating all this without also eating an orange. <laughs> <laughs> In the middle of the night, the stars twinkle bright. Rinky dinky doo, rinky dinky. Today's adventure starts on the Elf Road. Fox Cubs! Are you looking forward to your first day at Fox Cubs, Ben? Yes, Dad. I loved being a Fox Cub when I was your age. I've still got my hat. In my day, it was Old Grey Wolf in charge. They've got a new leader now. I wonder who it is. Welcome to Fox Cubs, everybody. I'm the new leader. Hello, Hello Nanny, Nanny Plum. Plum. Don't call me Nanny Plum. I'm Fluffy Owl, to wit to woo. Hello, Fluffy Owl, to wit to woo. Hi, Holly. Hi, Ben. Hello, Nanny Plum. What are you doing here? I'm the new Fox Cub leader. You have to call me Fluffy Owl. Twit to woo. Oh, hello, Fluffy Owl. You have to say the twit to woo bit as well. Tawit ta woo. You're just in time for the badges. Oh, is someone getting a badge? Ben, you're going to have so much fun getting your badges. Dad, what badges did you get when you were a fox cub? I got an adventure badge, a sailing badge and a knots badge. A knots badge? Yes. After days and days of tying knot after knot, I finally got my knots badge. It was hard work, but worth it. Who wants a badge? Eh? Everyone step forward and tell me what badge you'd like. You first, Rosie. Can I have... Adventure badge, please. One adventure badge. But, but... Can I have a sailing badge? Of course. One sailing badge. Strawberry, what would you like? A knots badge, please. Here you go. Stop it. Stop it at once. You don't just hand out badges. Why not? You have to earn your badges. To get my adventure badge, I had to spend three days camping in the wild. Well, I watched a whole night of TV for my watching TV badge. Watching TV badge? That's not what the Fox Cubs are about. The Fox Cubs are about having adventures in the wild. Adventures do sound like fun. We like adventures. Mr Elf, can we have an adventure in the wild? Well, it's not up to me. It's up to Fluffy Owl. Oh, very well. Follow me, everyone. OK, here we are, having an adventure. What do we do? Well, imagine we had to look for food. How do we find food here? Fluffy Owl, why don't you show the children how to find food in the wild? All right. This way, everyone. Now they'll see. It's not easy to find food in the wild. Hiya! We found food. Ice cream! Ice cream? Yes, from the ice cream van over there. But that's cheating! Look, you said find some food, so we did. Now you're changing the rules. We got you a raspberry ripple, Mr Elf. OK, moving on from finding food. Does anybody know how to make a shelter? Oh, me! Me! I brought my tent. Watch this. There we go. Ooh. It's got five bedrooms, a bathroom, a television and even a cellar. Oh, it's amazing. The best tent in the world. We can't sleep in that. Why not? What's wrong with being comfortable when you're on holiday? This is an adventure, not a holiday. We'll make a shelter out of two twigs and a leaf. You lean the twigs up like this and... Hey, presto, what have you got? Two twigs and a leaf. Where's the bed? You sleep on the ground. It's nature's bed. Lovely and cosy. But well, why bother when you can sleep in my castle tent? You're missing the point. 
Do you fox cubs want a real adventure? Yes! Good. If you're going to learn how to survive in the wild, you have to be in the wild. Like, uh, at the top of a mountain. What? Fluffy Owl, please magic us to the top of a mountain. OK. Abracadabra. Wow, we're at the top of a real mountain. Fantastic. Now, how are we going to get home? Easy. I'll magic us home. Let's say you don't have your wand with you. OK, I'll call for help. No phone either. Hello, hello. But that's going to make it very, very difficult to get home. Exactly. But when you get home, you will have earned your adventure badge. So, what do we do first? Maybe we should start by working out which mountain we're on. Good, Ben. That's exactly what we should do. Fluffy Owl, which mountain did you magic us to? No idea. What? You just said a mountain. I don't know one mountain from another. Well, that makes things a bit tricky. Why? Because we don't even know what country we're in. Oh. Perhaps you should magic us back home. And we'll start again. I can't. You threw my wand down the mountain. Oh, yes. Let's ring for help. But you threw Fluffy Owl's phone down the mountain too. Oh, yes. So I did. You wanted us to be lost. Now we're lost. Happy now? I'm sure Mr Elf wouldn't have sent us to the top of a mountain if he didn't know how to get us home. Thank you, Strawberry. OK. I think I can work out where we are by using my compass. Let's see. North is that way, and the position of the sun is... Oh, my goodness! We're on Everest! What's that, then? Mount Everest! The tallest mountain in the whole world! Is Mount Everest far from home, Dad? A bit far from home, Ben, yes. And is it really very high? A bit high? Yes, Holly. I suppose we could just climb down. Just climb down? Just climb down Everest? The enormous, treacherous mountain of rock and ice? Perilous cliff after perilous cliff that could only be conquered by the world's greatest mountaineers? So, Mount Everest is not safe for children to climb down? No, Mount Everest isn't child-friendly. So what do we do now, Mr Einstein? I don't know. Oh, if only we had my castle tent. <sighs> what good would that do? We could watch TV. Could the fairy fly for help? In that wind, you'd be blown away. No, what we need is someone who can climb down the mountain and fetch help. I know. Gaston is good at climbing. <coughs> good idea, Ben. Go, Gaston, go. Get help. <coughs> it may be some time before Gaston returns. After climbing down the mountain, he will have to journey through the jungle, cross the desert, swim the ocean before he arrives at the little kingdom. Hello, Gaston. <coughs> What's that? All the children and Fluffy Owl and Mr Elf all trapped at the top of a mountain, you say? <coughs> then this is a job for old Grey Wolf. Ow! Lead the way, Gaston. Is this mountain far? Still further? Oh, are we nearly there? So, quite a way then. Gaston's been gone for ages. I hope he's all right. Gaston! And he's brought Old Grey Wolf. Oh, I'm very pleased to see you, Old Grey Donkey. It's Old Grey Wolf, and you have to say, Awoo! OK, Awoo! What's your plan, Old Grey Wolf? Awoo! Awoo. Have you brought the elf helicopter to lift us to safety, or a team of mountain rescue elves to carry us down the mountain? Uh, actually, I set off in a bit of a hurry, and you were a bit further away than I expected. So, you're just here on your own without a plan of any sort? Uh, yes. That's about it. Maybe you should do a bit of a magic? I'd love to, but he threw my wand away. So that's why I found it at the bottom of the mountain. Oh, it's good to have you back again. 
so, if you wouldn't mind um, magicking us back home? No problemo. Hooray! That was a really good adventure. Thank you, Fluffy Owl. Twit woo. Well, you should thank Mr Elf. It was his idea. Thank you, Mr Elf. Yes, Dad. It was great. Ho, oh, oh. ho. And I think all of you fox cubs have earned your adventure badges. Indeed. Adventure badges for everyone. Thank, thank you, old grey wolf. Wow. And for fetching help in the Fox Cubs' hour of need, one of you has earned the rescue badge. Who is it? Gaston, of course. <laughs> Gaston to the rescue! <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the Little Castle. Dinner party! Nanny Plum, your pie, mash and chips is delicious. What's for pudding? I hope it's not too heavy. Treacle sponge pudding with blancmange and custard. Hooray! Excellent. Nanny Plum is the best cook in the Little Kingdom. I say Nanny Plum is the best cook in the whole world. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. Hello. Hello. Queen Marigold here. <gasps> it's King and Queen Marigold. Oh, no. They're so boring and snooty. We were just eating a lovely meal of spinach with sea foam when we thought how nice it would be if you joined us for dinner tomorrow. They've invited us for dinner tomorrow. Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll handle this. Sorry, we can't come for dinner. Oh, dear. Dear, what a shame. I know you hardly ever get to eat good food. What? I'll have you know we have the best cook in the whole world. You have the best cook in the whole world? Yes. Oh. Well, then we must come to you for dinner instead. See you tomorrow. Toodle pip. Oh. I've got some good news and some bad news. What's the good news? Good news. We're not going to King and Queen Marigold's for dinner tomorrow. Hooray! What's the bad news? They're coming here. Oh, oh no! What are we going to do? King and Queen Marigold will want to eat something special. Luckily, we have the best cook in the whole world, Nanny Plum. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. What about baked potato stuffed with potato with chips and mash and a fried egg on top? No, Nanny. They will want special modern food. I can cook porridge. That's not modern food. What is modern food, Mummy? It is very delicate food in tiny portions. I can do tiny portions. <laughs> well done, Nanny. That is small. <laughs> Of course, it will get bigger when the magic wears off. When is the magic going to wear off, Nanny? Um, about now. Excuse me. <laughs> it's not just the size of the food, Nanny. Modern cooking is fussy. No problem. Nanny has until tomorrow evening to come up with something. Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Good. That's that sorted. Nanny! What are you going to do? Uh, I don't know. Morning, Holly. Are you coming out to play? No, Ben. I need to help Nanny learn how to cook. But Nanny Plum's a very good cook. She is the best cook in the world, Ben. But she can't cook modern food. Why does she need to cook modern food? It's what King and Queen Marigold like, and they're coming to dinner tonight. What Nanny needs is a cookbook. Come on. Wait for me. Where are we going? The Great Elf Library. Ooh. Excuse me, wise old elf. Shush. This is a library. Sorry. 
We need a book of modern cooking for Nanny Plum. But Nanny Plum is an excellent cook. Yes, she's the best cook in the whole world. But she can't do modern cooking. Hmm, let's see. The Elf Book of Pies, The World of Spaghetti and Mash, A Complete History of Egg Sandwiches. Is there anything modern? Uh, what exactly is modern cooking, Princess Holly? It is food that's very delicate and special, and not porridge. Oh. Wait a minute. This doesn't look like an elf book. That's because I'm not. Ah, a magical fairy book. What's that doing in my elf library? There are no words in the book. I am a magical cookery book. Where are all your recipes? Oh, if you tell me what you want to cook, I will tell you how to cook it. We want to cook a special modern meal, please. How modern? Uh, very modern. Certainly. You will need the following ingredients. Potato, carrot, onion, peas and cheese. That doesn't sound very special. Shush, I am thinking. Voila! One recipe for a very modern meal. Hooray! Shh! This is a library. Can I borrow this book, wise old elf? You can keep it, Princess Holly. Fairy books do not belong in the elf library. Thank you. King and Queen Marigold, how lovely to see you. Hello, darling. It's always a pleasure to visit your little kingdom. <laughs> I hope you're hungry. Nanny's been in the kitchen all day. We haven't eaten a thing since breakfast. We didn't want to spoil a dinner made by the best cook in the whole world. I wonder if baked beans are modern. Nanny, we've got a magic cookbook. Hello, Nanny Plum. Oh, you found my cookbook. Where was she? She was in the elf library. What were you doing in there? I was getting very bored. <laughs> <laughs> the book knows a recipe for a modern meal. Oh, good. What are the ingredients? A potato, a carrot, an onion, some peas and cheese. But that's what I would normally cook. Yes, the ingredients are simple, but the way we cook them is not. Now, boil a pot of water. Chop potato, carrot, onion, peas and cheese. And put them into the pot. Boil for one minute and then collect the steam. And serve. Is that it? It is a very delicate dish. It's so good of you to have us at such short notice. No trouble at all. We can't wait to see what the best cook in the world cooks for dinner. Oh, sorry, that's my tummy. I'm just so looking forward to this lovely meal. <laughs> dinner is served. Enjoy your meal, Majesties. Mm. Oh, yes, such a delicate flavour. So subtle. Nanny? Your Majesty? What's this called? Cloud of vegetable soup. It's just steam. Such a sensitive dish. Mm, how wonderful. I can barely taste it. Does it come with any potatoes? Uh, no. Nanny, I'm hungry. Me too. No problem. These leftover potatoes, carrots, onions, peas and cheese have made a lovely soup. Ooh, yummy! Um, this steam is delicious, of course. But will there be anything else to follow? Yes, even though it's very filling, I could eat a tiny something more. I could eat a lot, lot more. <laughs> What's that lovely smell? It's coming from the kitchen. This is delicious, Nanny. Mmm, it's the best. I say, what's this? It's just the children's supper. 
It smells very nice. It's only some soup I made from the leftovers. It's not very modern. You wouldn't like it. Could I try just a little bit? <laughs> the taste is so tasty. Can I try some too? And me. And me. <laughs> <laughs> Marvellous, Nanny. Ahem. I have an announcement to make. Nanny Plum is indeed the best cook in the whole world. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Now, what would everyone like for pudding? Something modern or my treacle pudding? Treacle pudding! <laughs> <laughs>